In this video, we're going to look at how to use assembly four, and we're going to use it in a scenario of having some parts that we want to put into an assembly. So we're not going to do all the modeling in assembly four. We're going to do the modeling in part design, and then I'm going to show you how to take parts, take um, the parts out of those files and put those into an assembly four model and create something with a little bit of animation in it too. Of course, there are other ways to do this, other ways to get to the same end result. But this works for me. I'm hoping it'll work for you. And I'm hoping by showing you something simple will help you to understand how it works. And then you can go ahead and make some great creations of your own. But first, if you'll do me a favor, looks like 80% of the people who are watching are not subscribed. And I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe, click the like button, and hit the notification bell so you can watch other great videos like this. So to start with, I'm going to assume that we made some parts, just regular parts in part design, and then wanted to assemble them afterwards. So that's my uh, mode that I'm working in. So I'm just going to create a standard part. I'm going to call it rod. So yes, we're OK with that. I'm going to create on the XY plane. I'm just going to create a circle. And I'm going to constrain that circle because I want to give it a dimension so I know how big it is. I'm going to make it 30 millimeters in size. Close that. I'm going to pad that guy to 75. Say OK. Put me in the middle so we can see it. There it is. And then I just want to do a second sketch. Just for grins and giggles, I am going to do a second circle and we're going to hit that guy there remember so we can see our drawing this is the uh allows you to look through a sectional view of the part so you can actually see the drawing on the surface you'll probably remember that from other videos and then i'm just going to give that a dimension i'm going to call that 25 just because and I'm going to say close and then I'm going to pocket that one and I'm going to pocket it sixty five deep I think and it's to be reversed so it makes a pocket and there you have it so now I've got a tube with a hole in it Say so, OK, and that hole doesn't go the whole way through. One important point when you're creating this is to have unique names because it gets very confusing when you start putting everything together. So I'm going to call this uh, Rod Body, and I'm going to call this Rod Pocket. I'm going to call that sketch broad sketch one. I'm going to call this pad broad pad. And I'm going to call this sketch broad sketch. Zero. Okay, so I'm just giving everything some unique names. I'm going to save that. Everything is saved, and we're finished with that part for the moment. Then what I want to do is I'm going to create a new part, uh, a new model. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this model. So you can see, I'm going to create a new model. I'm going to call this one Master Sketch. And again, I'm going to create it on the XY plane. Say OK. Let's just create a square or rectangle, I should say. We're going to constrain that quickly. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to give that a couple of dimensions. And these dimensions are not super important, to be honest with you. Almost dimension that the wrong way. I'll make that round number, just say 75. And we'll create that one and make it 200, just so they're round numberish. And then we want to put some circles in here. So I'm going to go with that circle and another circle. And I'm, if you notice, I'm making I'm highlighting this line because I want it to be attached to that line. So that's basically what I'm doing. Then I'm going to select all of these circles. They're all going to be the same size. And I want this one, this one around that center line to be symmetrical. And then I want this to be 35. Doesn't really matter because this is just a sketch when I actually use in these parts, but we are going to create another part that looks like this. So I think it's a good idea to, uh, to create how you'd like it. And then we're just going to dimension this guy from here to here. And we'll call that 50. And that gives us a nice constrained sketch to get started with. So I'm going to close that sketch. And I'm going to put that sketch in the middle so we can see where it is. And then what I'm going to do in this master sketch is I'm going to put some local coordinate systems in that we can locate things. Now, again, I'm using this mode because I want to show you how to do it. This is not necessarily the most complex assembly, as I could do it without the master sketch. But I want to show you that technique so that when you're putting things together, you can create your own master sketch and you can put things together around that sketch. For the local coordinate system, then, I have to go into assembly four. Then I select the body that has this sketch in it. And I select this create new LCS. And I'm going to create these as circle left. And that's going to be this one here. And as you can see, I have a bunch of options that I can select. I want it to be concentric around that circle. And just because as you know, with a with a local coordinate system, the blue one is the Z or the Z axis. The green one is is the Y axis, and the red one is the X axis. I like to have my Y axis going that way, and my X axis going across. It's up to you how you want to do it. As long as you remember how you've done it, everything should be good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this axis around the z-axis. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, and I'll put this red part um, along the x-axis. So let's do that. So now I have the red, the x going this way, the y going this way, and the z going that way. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to apply that, say OK. And whenever these uh, check marks come up, that means you need to recompute. So if you just hit this refresh button up here, it recomputes everything, and you're good to go again. So what we're going to do is select that body again. We're going to add the next one. And we're going to call this one um, circle center. So guess what we're going to do here? We're going to hit the OK. We're going to select that guy, and we're going to rotate the concentric one rotate it 90 degrees and we're going to say okay to that so now you can see i have a left center and of course you can guess we're going to now put in the right one so same thing i'm going to say circle right and the names are just so that we can keep this all organized so that when we look at what we're adding to when we're adding a part and we want to add a it to an LCS, a local coordinate system, we can see which ones are which. If we just call them one, two, three, we're going to get lost very quickly. Okay, and all of my 
LCS is in the same way. The Z is in the same direction. The X is in the same direction. The Y is in the same direction. Everything looks good there. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to recompute. I'm going to change this body's name. I'm going to rename it to master sketch body. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm calling it that so that I can keep track of it. And then I'm just going to save that. Okay. And I will close that. Now I'm going to go back into part design. I'm going to design my other piece that I want to assemble. So the other piece is going to look just like that sketch that I just did, but I'm going to model it as a, a part. So we're going to call this one main body. Again on the XY plane. Zoom out a bit. And we're going to build that guy. This is my favorite thing is where I can switch that back up. I always do that. I, I end up twisting this thing when I'm doing a sketch. I always use this button just to strain it back up again. Honestly, that's a lifesaver for me because I, I do it continually. So this is going to be just a sketch of or a model of uh, a body that we can run those cylinders up and down in. So I'm going to do something very similar to what we just had. I might put some uh, chamfers on it and things that I don't have on the sketch. So let's have a look here. And we want to do three circles. So we're going to go into the middle. Put one here. Notice I make that, that line go yellow and it attaches it to the line. And we're going to have the same constraints. So we're going to call that 200. It doesn't have to be the same. It can This can be any size because I'm going to link it to the assembly on the center part. So that's all we're going to need for this guy. And this one I'll, I'll, we'll do 75 as well. And then I want to say this one, this one, and this one. Ugh. If you miss the line, it unselects everything. So you can't miss the line. So equals. And then oh, sometimes I get these two confused. Now, call me old fashioned, but that and that look very, very similar. So we'll go with that. And we're going to make it big enough. So we know the the rod was um, 30. So we're going to make this 40. And give us a clearance so we can see it moving. And then the other thing we need to do is take that one and that one. And make them symmetrical around that center. And then one more dimension. And we should be good to go. If you remember, this dimension was 50. And there we have it. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to pad that. I'm going to pad it. Uh, our rods were 50 tall, so I'm going to pad this 45 so you'll be able to see it in there. And there it is. And I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to run a chamfer around the edge here. Chamfer three, we're going to add some other edges. We're going to add that edge, and that edge, and that edge. I guess we could do these edges too. We get all those edges in. There we go. And now I'm going to save that. Now what I want to do is to go into assembly four. So I'm in assembly four and I need to add an LCS to this part. So again, I select the body and while we're at it, I'm going to rename that to main body. And I'm going to select that body. I'm going to add an LCS. I'm going to call this main body LCS. I'm going to select that circle. I'm going to tell it it's concentric. 
So now I have this in the middle. And again, I want my I want my X direction to go that way. So I'm going to rotate around the Z axis, the blue axis, 90 degrees. And there I have it the same. Now, if I want this to sit lower down, I could offset this LCS. So you can offset in a direction. So I could say my Z direction drops down. But for what I'm doing here, that's fine where it is. So I'm, I'm going to leave it there. But I could move it up and down, left and right, whatever I wanted to do from an attachment point of view in this screen. Okay, so I've added that one. So now I'm going to save that. I can't emphasize how much it is important to save files as you go with these assemblies because you will, otherwise you'll find yourself in trouble. So I'm just going to open the rod again. Now I'm going to add an LCS to this guy. So in assembly four, I'm going to pick my rod body and I'm going to add an LCS. I'm going to call this rod LCS. Say OK, pick that circle till it's concentric. And I'm going to rotate that one. I don't really need to rotate it because it's circular, but I'm going to rotate it just, just to, for completeness. And then say OK. So now everything has an LCS in it. And I'm going to close everything there. Save everything. It's all closed, it's all saved. Everything has an LCS in. Now we need to create our assembly. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file and then we're going to create a model. And this model also has this parts folder in it because I created this. It's a new assembly model. So when I create it, it has a parts folder and it has the actual model itself. The model is empty at the moment of an LCS and the parts folder is empty. Now I'm going to save this And I'm going to save it as assembly file. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Now, when you're doing a, an assembly, you want to assemble your parts or bring your parts together in this parts folder. And then you use this um, insert a link to a part. You insert from here into the model. So you can create the model in assembly four. You go ahead and create a new, new part, you create a new body, create a sketch, model it all there. But in the mode that I'm showing you, I'm assuming you've already made these parts somewhere else and you've decided now that you want to bring them together. So That's what I'm looking to do, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. This is how I do it, because I don't always know if I'm going to put it in assembly right away. I sometimes uh, do, sometimes I don't. It just depends. So we're going to assume that those models that I made were made previously and not necessarily um, going to be in an, in an assembly, but I want to put them in an assembly now. I will try and keep this as clear as I can because I will admit it confused me when I first tried to do it. Um, but now I've done it a few times, it seems to be fairly straightforward. So what I want to do is I want to open up the models that have all the pieces in it. So I'm going to open up my rod file. I'm going to open up my main body file. And I'm going to open up my master sketch file. Now, what I want to be able to do is in my assembly file is access these. I have the option to create links, but I don't want to create links because I think that makes it more confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the bodies out of these and I'm going to put them into my assembly. And the reason for that is I want to be able to access everything from just the assembly. So right now, these three are complete as far as I'm concerned. We're not going to modify them again in these files. 
So all we're going to do with them is we're going to use them to put in this part. So the way we do that is we take the body, we just left click on it and drop it onto the the file, not in the model or the part, but on the file itself. We're just dropping it there. And then we'll take and actually once I've done that, so I've done that one, if you look inside, the body's gone. So I want to close this and I don't want to save it. Make sure you don't save it at this point because it won't have a body in it, so it's gone. So I'm going to discard that. Then I'm going to take the body, my main body, I'm going to do the same thing, I'm dropping it into the assembly file. So now I have both of those in the assembly file. I'm going to close that file. Close document, discard. Whatever you do, don't hit save or you're going to lose all the information in it. And then take this body, I'm going to drop that one in, and go back to this guy and close document, discard. Okay, so now those other documents are no longer important to us because those other documents are not going to be linked to this. So if we want to make any changes, we're going to make them here inside the assembly. All of our parts, and if you look inside these bodies, all the sketches, the pads, the pockets, they're all in there. So we have everything we need, all the LCSs, everything is all there. So this is the bit that that I found confusing to start with, but now I sort of, I, I feel like I understand it anyway. I'm sure there'll be people who comment with better ways of doing it, but this is a way that works. This is the way I do it, and this works for me. So I'm hoping it'll work for you. So I take these bodies, and I put them in my parts library, if you like that. That folder is my parts library. So I'm going to take them all and just drop them in that parts library. So now if I open that, you'll see they're all inside the parts library. So the parts library, if you look at it this way, is these are the pieces that you can use to drop into your assembly. The model is what's actually in the assembly. So although we can see everything in the same space here, it's not an assembly yet. And what we're going to do is we're going to assemble it around those LCSs. So the first thing we're going to do is put the master sketch into the model. We do that by hitting this link and we say master sketch body and we can leave that name that came up as master sketch body because there's only one of those so everything's good. We're going to insert it and we're going to insert it with the circle center in the part assembly origin. So these are the local coordinate systems. Remember we created the circle left, the circle center, and the circle right in the master sketch. So I've picked the circle center and I'm putting it in the local coordinate system origin of the parent assembly. That's the first thing in. So I'm going to say OK. And now if I turn off the master sketch body in my parts library, I still have a master sketch in there because it's here in my assembly now. So if I can, if I turn off all of the, everything that's in the parts is turned off. The only thing we have now is the master sketch body inside the assembly. So now I want to add a rod body. I want to add three rod bodies actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say rod body and I'm going to insert this part and I'm going to call this rod body center. Insert it and I'm going to say the rod LCS. So the rod body only has a rod LCS and I want to insert it into my master sketch in the circle center. So now the center where I put the LCS on this rod is on that center there. So we're going to do that. Say OK. Now you can see in my assembly I have my rod. My rod is in there. Let me just, there you can see the hole in the bottom of it. So it's sitting nicely in my sketch. 
Then what I want to do is add another part, which is going to be another rod body. So I'm going to go link part, rod body, and I'm going to call this rod body left. And I'm going to insert that. Now initially the, the rod body's just gone into the the local coordinate system of the assembly. So I'm going to say rod body center. It's going into my master sketch and it's going in left. Now you will notice that left is right and right is left. That's because this is up the other way to the way we had it in the sketch. So don't be confused by that as long as they're separate. It doesn't matter if they're called left and right. As long as they're separate, everything looks good. So we'll say OK to that. And then we're going to do the same thing again with another rod body. This time we'll call it rod body right. I G H T. And we'll insert that. And we're going to insert it by the rods LCS into the master sketch body on the right. And we'll say OK. Now I have an assembly of this master sketch and these three rods. And now what we want to do is to drop in our main body and drop that into the same assembly. So we're going to do a link. We're going to say the main body. We can accept this because there's only one. Insert. We're going to say the main body LCS. And that's going to go into the sketches LCS in the center and we'll say OK. And now we've assembled those rods into that body using that sketch and we know that everything is organized around these local coordinate systems. So that is basically how you do an assembly. It's that simple. Now we want to animate this a little bit. So let me show you something uh, about how these can move. So if I go into uh, the rod body center and I select the rod body center, you can now see that it is positioned in our assembly and has an attachment and the attachment has a position and that position has x y and z coordinates so if we take the z coordinate and we say move that one 50 you can see that this is now moved 50 and so we can do the same thing for each of those rods so what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable that we can assign to this position. And then we're going to change that variable so we can move these up and down. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing we want to do is assign a variable. So we click on this plus button up here, assign a variable. And we're going to accept the default float. We're going to call the variable uh, transform. And we're going to start off with a value of zero. Honestly, none of that really matters. As long as you have a name for it, it really doesn't matter. You can put a description in here, something that describes what this variable is all about. But to be honest, you're only going to use this one variable, so it's not a big deal. So we'll say OK to that. Now, I can go into the Z position. This is the attachment position. Now, there are two positions. So there is the placement which also has a position. We don't want to mess with that. It's the attachment position, the Z one. We go in here, up pops our little wiggly woggly. And to set a variable, you say variables, and then transform, and we can say OK. So now this Z position is based around whatever that variable holds. So if we go to this animate assembly, these little gears, pop that up, our variable is transform. 
and we can move uh, we can move this up and down basically by changing this. So so we have a range begin at zero, range end at one hundred, and then we can shift that up and down. So I can do it real time. And I can run it to make it do its thing. So very simple. Close that. Now I'm going to take rod body left. And once again, we're going in the attachment. We're going in the position to the Z or the Z. And we're going to say variables. And we're going to say transform. Say OK. So now, if I use my gears and I say this begins at zero, we can move both of them up and down, which is good. But it's kind of odd that they're going both up and down, so we don't want that to happen. So we can take this one back into our variable and in front of it, we can say negative. And then we can say, OK. Now, if I do the movement, you will see that one will go up and one will go down. So we like that. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for the right one. Variables and transform. Make it negative. Say OK. And start off my animation. And I'm going to start my animation at minus 100. And I'm going to go to plus 100. And I'm going to hit this pendulum. This pendulum makes it swing back and forth like a pendulum. I'll say run. And you can see it goes all the way through. And we have linear movement. If I just turn that a little bit this way. If you try and rotate it while it's running, sometimes it stops. But I'll just have a look and see if I can do that. Well, oh, that let me. That was a weird looking thing. So now you can see the bottoms of them with the hole in it, and you can see that the whole thing is moving up and down quite nicely, and it's basically running up and down around this variable. Now, one thing I will tell you is when you close that, they're going to stay at wherever you left them. So if you want them to be roughly in the middle, you just put them in the middle before you close it, and then everything looks fine. Um, can get rid of my sketch and turn my sketch off. So finally, just pop it up and down, run on a pendulum. Just make sure you have a range that begins and ends at different places. That way you can avoid any issues. And let's stop that. Get it close to zero. And then finally, if you wanted to do, if it was a rotational assembly that you wanted to do, you would just do the same thing, um, except for where I have it in my position here, my, my variable set on my position X, Y, and Z, you can do the same thing on your angle. So what you would do is you would set the axis that's rotating. So whichever one of these you make one is the axis that will rotate on. So if I have Z as one, it's going to rotate around Z. And then I would set the variable to this angle and that would have it rotate. Now I could do that except for these guys are round, so you're not going to see them rotate. Um, one other thing to bear in mind with the animation is there are no, there's no ability to set 
physics. So you can't say that this will bump into this and then you should stop rotating. So if I, if I made this a rotational piece, it would just rotate right through these pieces. It, it won't stop it. So the, there is no physics. In Blender, you can set up physics where you can say it can't rotate through another body. That body is solid. Um, and that would be you know, a whole nother engine to do that. I doubt if Blender's going to, or if uh, FreeCAD's going to get to where Blender is. So maybe in another video, we'll take some exports from FreeCAD and we'll put them into Blender. We'll animate them there and show you how those um, physics work as well. Uh, if you're interested in that, please leave a comment and I will be sure and put something together. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already done so, please give us a subscribe. Uh, we're just getting close to the 1000 subscriber mark. And for those of you who don't know, that's quite a, a big deal with YouTube, once you get to a thousand and four thousand watch hours, um, not only can you monetize, but you actually get access to other features of the YouTube partner program. So if you enjoy these videos and you want to see more, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, give this video a like. If you drop a comment too, then more people will see this video because the more comments you put on there, the better it is for the algorithm. And then people will get to see the video because I found that some people don't know I have other videos because YouTube's not presenting them to them unless there's a bunch of comments on them and likes. So appreciate all your help. Appreciate you watching the video. Thanks for everything. See you in the next one.